Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the live in person and live Zoom worship service of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Riverside. Thank you for coming out here post holidays um, and joining us here in person. And thank you for joining us remotely by Zoom, where we will continue live streaming and posting these services on our YouTube channel for our virtual attendees. I'm Grace Preuss, a member of the worship committee, and I will be your worship associate today. Other members of the worship committee you will be hearing from include Alec Peck singing the hem our hymns. We welcome you to join us this morning with an open mind and an open heart and with muted electronic devices, please. We invite you to leave your worries and defenses at the door and trust that what happens in worship is inspiring and powerful. Together we affirm that this day and our being together can make each of us braver, more compassionate, and wiser as we begin a new day and a new week and possibly a new year. Although our doors are open, the pandemic is not over. So while we are here, please leave your masks on and socially distance. We can speak in normal tones, but singing or chanting creates an increased risk of airborne exposure. So we ask you to refrain for the time being. We invite those of you in the sanctuary to sit back and enjoy listening to the music. For those of you at home, sing your hearts out. And now I invite you to sit back and take a slow, deep breath as we move into the worship hour. Please join me in reading our UU covenant. Love is the spirit of this church and service its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Okay, our first song today is It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. Please sit back and listen uh, quietly. Our speaker today is Reverend Dr. Susan Frederick Gray. 
The Reverend Dr. Susan Frederick Gray began her six year term as president of the Unitarian Universalist Association in June 2017. As president of the association, she is responsible for administering staff and programs that serve its more than 1,000 member congregations. She also acts as principal spokesperson and minister at large for the UUA. Susan brings a strong focus on mission and strategic planning to her leadership at the UUA as it works to dismantle systems of white supremacy. As president, Susan has emphasized that this is no time for a casual faith and no time to go it alone. She has represented the UUA in the 2017 Charlottesville protests against white nationalist violence, has worked in conjunction with the Poor People's Campaign on issues of poverty, witnessed at the US-Mexico border for immigrant justice, and partnered with local advocates to expand voting rights in Florida. In addition to her regular column in UU World, Susan has written for Vice, Sojourners, and numerous local papers. Prior to her election, she served as lead minister of the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Phoenix, Arizona, where she was a national voice for immigrant rights. Susan played a critical role in the long-term campaign to end the constitutional violations of Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Ar Arpaio. Susan is a lifelong Unitarian Universalist with roots at Elliott Chapel in St. Louis, Missouri. During her time at Harvard Divinity School, she served as student minister of religious education at the Winchester University Unitarian Society. Susan also served as intern minister and sabbatical minister at the First UU Church of Nashville, Tennessee, and served for five years as minister of the First Unitarian Universalist Church of Youngston, Ohio. Prior to ministry, Susan worked briefly in the field of genetic sequencing following her Bachelor of Science in Molecular Biology from the University of Wisconsin, Madison. Susan is married to the Reverend Brian Frederick Gray, a minister with dual fellowship with the United Church of Christ and the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. They live in Cambridge, Massachusetts with their teenage son and family dog. Today's sermon is the 2021 Gratitude Homily from UUA President Reverend Susan Frederick Gray. As we enter this season of holidays and holy days, we have an opportunity to draw our attention to what sustains us, to draw our attention to the sources of love and care and gratitude in our lives. We have two lightings of sacred flames. The first is the Occupied Indigenous Peoples Remembrance Candle. The second is the lighting of our own chalice the symbol of our faith. We walk upon the traditional territories of diverse and sovereign peoples, the original people of this land who continue to cry out for justice and self-determination. This spot we occupy was first a sacred space of several groups of indigenous peoples, including the Kawiya, the Cupeño, and the Serrano. We, the Universalist Unitarian Church of Riverside, light this sacred flame as the stewards of this sacred and holy place. We are blessed with a space and opportunity to strive to live out our common principles, to bring justice, equity, and compassion into our daily lives, to resist all that threatens the earth and her people, and to be part of a world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. Let these thoughts, let these thoughts carry us forth as we journey and worship together. Today's reading of the chalice lighting is The Stars in the Pews by Eric Walker Wickstrom. Each of the stars in the heavens is unique and individual, yet together they form the night sky. Each of us here is an individual, yet together we are a congregation. Each of our congregations is unique 
an individual, yet together we are an association. For stars in the sky, for people in the pews, for members of our association, in gratitude, we light this chalice. Thank you, Bill. This portion of the service is called Greeting Our Guests. We have a tradition at UUCR to welcome those who are visitors or have perhaps returning after some time away. We know it can be uncomfortable to stand up and speak in front of others. And so I will now ask for a volunteer from someone who has been here for a while to tell us your name and how you found out about our church. We ask you to come up to the mic and speak into it directly and clearly so everyone can hear. Do we have a volunteer? Good morning, Pat. Good morning, I'm Pat Kawunder. Um, I found out about this church because I started doing Tai Chi here in 1984 in the parish hall. It was five years before I overcame my church phobia to look in the sanctuary, but I joined the church in the mid nineties and found friendship and great joy. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. And that's how it's done. If you are new here, a visitor or an old friend, please raise your hand to stand up and come to the mic by the podium. Please let us know who you are, where you are from, and how you found out about us. Some people in the back. Welcome. Hi. Hey, everyone. My name is Manny, and I am a, a law student. And I'm here visiting my mom, who will introduce herself shortly. Um, and we've been to Unitarian churches in the past, and it's, it's always such a, a wonderful and peaceful experience, and I'm just really glad to be here with all of you today, the day after Christmas. Thank you. Hi, my name is Irene. Um, it's like one of my first times coming to this church, but I'm her niece and his cousin, and so I'm just happy to um, just be with them today and kind of see all this going on, so nice to meet you. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning. My name is Irene. I'm Manny's mother and Irene's uh, aunt. I'm very happy to be here. I know I have been uh, in other Unity Church in Tampa, Florida. My, my experience was wonderful while I would share with that congregation. So we search about where we can find a, a, a church, a unity church here in California. We found this one and we are very happy to be here. We're glad you found us. Thank you. If there is someone else, anyone else in the audience? If there is someone online who would like to introduce themselves, please raise your hand and we will call on you. Um, for our new guests, our visitor's book is out in the parish hall. So please leave your name um, before you leave so that we know you are here and your contact information if you'd like to know about our upcoming events. For those online, the best way to get added to the mailing list is to email the church office at admin at uuchurchofriverside.org. During the service, we will mention several websites, email addresses, and phone numbers. At the end of the service, we will leave up a slide with all of this information, and it is available on our website. Due to a recent increase in cases, the California Department of Public Health has mandated that everyone in California wear a mask in indoor public spaces and workplaces. In these uncertain times, the safety of our members and visitors are a top priority at UUCR. We respectfully ask that everyone wear a mask and socially distance indoors as required. 
To that end, we ask you to take your coffee outside the church after the service so that there's no risk of removing your mask while socializing in the parish hall. Thank you for your cooperation. Although no vaccinations are 100% foolproof against infection, COVID-19 vaccines are proving highly effective, especially at preventing serious illness and death. Evidence is showing that boosters for adults given at the appropriate time after your primary vaccination series can help extend the protection and keep it at a higher level. Stopping a pandemic requires using all the tools we have available for prevention measures. You can make an appointment at vaccine.ca.gov or for more information and more options of vaccine locations, please go to covid19.ca.gov. Let's all take personal responsibility to protect ourselves and others because we are all in this together. Let's all help stop the spread. Due to the increase in infections from the coronavirus, we will not be serving our first Sunday lunch in January. Our hymn now is Blue Boat Home. If you are in the sanctuary, I invite you to sit back, close your eyes and listen. This portion of our service is called sharing our stewardship. The, um, this is in order to support our beloved historical church, which can be accomplished in several ways. In addition to the weekly con collection, you may send your checks to the church address, which is shown here. You may contribute by PayPal using the QR code, which is on the church website and also in our newsletter. Stater Brothers Market gives our church a rebate on Stater grocery cards, which we will have in church each Sunday. 
you will get the full value and the church also receives a percentage. Amazon cards are also available. Please donate as the spirit moves you by whatever method works best for you. Thank you for your generosity. And to those who give of their time and their talent, thank you for your generous care and attention. Will our ushers now please come forward to receive the collection. Our next hymn is From You I Receive. Please sit back quietly and enjoy. Our meditation today is a guided meditation on gratitude by Susan Fredericks Gray. I invite you as you are willing into this time of meditation and reflection and into this practice of gratitude. If you like to write as a way of reflection, feel free to grab a journal or a piece of paper or something to write with. It's also okay just to find a comfortable position to sit in or stand in or whatever is most comfortable for you and your body to help you feel at ease. First, I invite you to take a few relaxing breaths. In and out. Feel free to close your eyes if that is most comfortable or to leave them gently open. Breathe in a way that feels comfortable and relaxing. I invite you at first just to pay attention to your body. If there's a place of tension or pain, imagine breathing your breath into that part of your body. Imagine the breath sort of expanding that area of tension and then breathing out through that pain or, or tightness, feeling the muscles release with the out breath. With breathing in, sort of expand your attention in any area of tension. Breathe out through that area, letting the tension go. 
breathing in through areas of tension and out, letting go of that tension or pain if you can. Now I invite you to bring your attention to your heart space, to your, to your chest, maybe your abdomen if you prefer. Again, just gentle breaths, breathing that feels natural and relaxing. Just be aware of anything that you're feeling. If you're feeling joy or calm and peace. If you're feeling sadness or grief or anxiousness, just be aware of it. Breathe alongside that feeling. Offer yourself compassion for whatever may be present to you right now. As you continue to breathe, ask yourself if there's anything or anyone you are feeling grateful for. Just ask yourself in your heart what, what or who are you grateful for? Is there anyone who's caring for you, showing you care, inspiring you, comforting you? Anyone who you love, who you are grateful for? Hold that person, those people. Visualize them, hold them in the gratitude that you feel for them. Breathe in that feeling of gratitude. Breathe out that gratitude for those loved ones. I invite you to just take a few more breaths. And as you do so, I invite you to think about anything about this day, anything that's happened, anything that you're looking forward to. If you have a window nearby, maybe you can see some sky or sun or tree or rain. Just be present to that. Take it in. Hold in your attention anything that you are grateful for from this day, that you're grateful to be looking forward to in this day. Anything that's present to you right now. I'm giving thanks for the sunshine after so much rain. Just hold that gratitude and that attention in your heart, in your mind, as you breathe in and out gently. Take a few more breaths and imagine just opening your heart space wide 
and asking if there's anything else you're grateful for. Their friends or community, faith, connections that you appreciate and feel attentive to. to. Open your heart to other things than in your life in this moment that you are feeling grateful for. Hold those in your attention. Breathe in that feeling of gratitude. Breathe in imagining or holding in your in your mind those people, those things, those connections. Breathe in that gratitude. It's also okay if some of our relationships are mixed with other emotions besides gratitude. Be present to that. Breathe it in. As you continue to breathe, just Take a moment to hold in your attention all these connections, all these relationships, all these gifts that you are grateful for. Bring them to your attention again together. Breathe in the gratitude you feel. Breathe out gratitude across those connections. As you are ready, as you continue to just breathe gently, you can bring your attention back to this time, to your body. To each other gathered in meditation. And as we close and as you breathe gently, Maybe offer a word in silence or out loud or spoken, just a word of gratitude for these gifts. Blessed be and amen. Now we invite you to turn your attention to the Gratitude Homily by Reverend Susan Fredericks Gray. Dear ones, I'm going to be honest with you. For me, these past few months have been rough. As the pandemic wears on, I have experienced a level of exhaustion I have not known before. And it's not just the pandemic, it's witnessing the devastating impacts of widespread disinformation, the attacks on our democracy, the attacks on people's lives and rights. It's the attack on women's rights and reproductive health. And it is living through the increasingly frequent impacts of climate change. It has all been so much. Mm -hmm. And there is still so much grief at the loss of loved ones, family members, friends, and the nearly incalculable loss of so many lives to this pandemic. 
The despair is real. If you are feeling it, I want you to know you are not alone. I knew this in-between or liminal time would be more difficult than the early days of the pandemic, but I didn't really appreciate how it would feel in my body and spirit. But here's the thing that is saving me now. I have found myself out of necessity turning towards gratitude. As we enter this season of holidays and holy days, we have an opportunity to draw our attention to what sustains us, to draw our attention to the sources of love and care and gratitude in our lives. However you celebrate, holidays are a time that, and the rituals that surround them are an opportunity for reflection. They often invite us to remember our past, which can bring joy as well as sorrow. But they also remind us to be attentive to the present moment. The writer and activist Adrian Marie Brown writes, I have had to soften my grip on a fearful future narrative and return to the humility of the present. I have had to soften my grip on a fearful future narrative and return to the humility of the present. Spiritually, in my daily practice, I am leaning into gratitude and attention to the sustaining present moment because I need a way to get in touch with the sources of joy and compassion in my life. Joy and compassion are life sustaining. We are made for joy and compassion. Leaning into gratitude for this earth Gratitude for the relationships that sustain me, leaning into the presence of love that surrounds me and all of us, leaning into the gift that is present with each breath of life. This practice is bringing more joy and light into my spirit. Gratitude is a foundation for so many of the values and qualities that we hope to nurture. Gratitude helps us appreciate our loved ones and bring more care and attention to that which matters most. With time and consistency, practicing gratitude does nurture more joy in life. It makes us attentive to the beauty and the gifts that surround us and that are not of our own making. Gratitude helps us turn our unrealized desires to an appreciation of what we already have and for what Adrienne Marie Brown describes as the humility of the present. Gratitude is a foundation for touching the earth with reverence, a practice of seeing life and the beauty of creation as a gift and treating it as such. Practicing gratitude, being intentional and in taking time to name what we are grateful for, also reminds us of our fundamental interdependence. When I ask myself, what am I grateful for? I think of the people that I love and who love me. I think of the relationships that sustain me. I think of my sweet dog and how much I love him, how grateful I am for his presence in our family. I think of the gift of the earth. I open my attention and give thanks for the blue sky or the rain, for the trees and the sun for the wind and the life-giving water. I remember the fundamental interdependence in which I am held, in which all life is held. And 
I feel that as a source of strength and connection. One of the things I love most about gratitude is that it's concrete. We all know what gratitude means. We know what it is to feel thankful. On the one hand, gratitude is simple and clear. However, when we really foster an intentional practice of being mindful every day, of taking time every day to think about what we are grateful for, to think about the gifts that have come to us and sustain us, we realize that gratitude actually has the power to deeply change our perspective. It has the power to shape and reshape our communities and our culture. Gratitude is incredibly powerful. Gratitude is a concrete practice that with time unlocks a generosity of spirit and a generosity of love. Experiencing our interconnectedness, experiencing the ways that we are not isolated beings, but deeply connected and held by gifts not of our own making, inspires a generosity of spirit for ourselves and for others. It inspires a desire to nurture those connections with love, to pay more attention to what matters. So I am calling myself back to gratitude these days. I am calling myself back to a practice of gratitude to find my way through the grief and the fear and the struggle and the despair. Now to be clear, this practice of gratitude doesn't make our grief or my grief go away. And it doesn't mean I don't still have moments of fear and anger or feel gripped by despair. Intentional spiritual practice actually makes space for, our, for all of us to welcome whatever is present in our hearts. And gratitude reminds me that that is not all that life holds for me. There are so many ways to create a regular practice of gratitude. I know people who have gratitude journals who spend a little time each day writing down one or two or three things that they were grateful for from that day. Many years ago, I had a practice where every time I would cross the threshold of my home, either to leave or to come back home, as I crossed the threshold, I would pause and take a breath and I would recall something that I was grateful for from the day or from the morning. These days, I am making time in my morning practice to ask myself what I am grateful for and to open my heart to those gifts. When our spirits are worn and weary from grief and loss and fear and anger, which legitimately our spirits are rightfully weary. When we are too short with ourselves or others, too impatient or critical or negative with ourselves or others, Gratitude can be a practice that nurtures in us a generosity of spirit, a generosity of kindness. So much right now seeks to isolate us, to divide us, to wear us out and wear us down. Turning towards a concrete practice of gratitude helps combat the ways in which we are being called to isolation and division because gratitude actually turns us toward each other. Reminds us of our interconnectedness, which is so critically spiritually needed in our world these days. I know there are times in our lives when our despair and our grief is so great that we may not be able to even name one thing we are grateful for. I know those days are real. 
However, I also know that even if nothing comes, that just calling our attention to look for things we are grateful for helps open our helps open our eyes, our attention, our spirits, so that with time, we can become more aware of the gifts around us. Gratitude and practicing gratitude each day has been saving me. It's been reminding me of joy. It's been inspiring, inspiring in me more joy, compassion, pleasure, humility. It's been reminding me of the gifts that are present in each moment. And finally, I want to say how grateful I am for all of you and how grateful I am for this faith that we share, this faith that nurtures and sustains and holds me in these, in these days. My prayer for you, my offering for you, I pray that there may be more moments of gratitude and joy in your days. And know that we are, all of us, deeply connected by unseen but real threads of compassion, of humanity and care, and that this is a source of strength and love in our lives. Blessings to you, blessed be, and I love you. Our closing hymn is What Wondrous Love. Those in the sanctuary, please sit back Close your eyes and listen quietly. Go forth in simplicity. 
Find and walk the path that leads to compassion and wisdom, that leads to happiness, peace, and ease. Welcome the stranger and open your heart to a world in need of healing. Be courageous before the forces of hate. Hold and embody a vision of the common good that serves the needs of all people. Namaste, amen, and blessed be. Um, so we are finished with the service today. If anyone would like to come up and share some observations or impressions um, from this service today, you're welcome to do so. Otherwise, we can go out into the parish hall and have coffee hour outside. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <laughs>